Welcome back to our fourth and final video on DS Control Point Troubleshooting. Now before we go any further, I realize I forgot a very key part of this. Should you ever need to call for support, we are going to ask for the DS Control Point version. Now that is found by going into Setup, from Setup, About DS Control Point. Now when you look here, you're going to see the version. It says 7.0. But what we're really asking for is the build version. That is the one that we're going to need to relay to support. Now, when you look at this, one of the things we need to make sure matches is if we're connecting to a DSSRV1 or 2, we want the version of DS Control Point here to match the version of server software running on the DS system. Now when I say server software, I don't mean the build version for DS Control Point running on a server. The reason why and what can cause some confusion is sometimes we'll check the DS Control Point version on the server and it will not match the actual server version of software. This is because DS Control Point is a standalone program and can be updated independently from the server software. Now the best way to actually check the server version of software is to simply open dsadmin. As dsadmin is loading, it will display the current software version. We want to make sure that version matches the version of DS Control Point running on the remote PC. Now with that aside, we're going to take a look at some of the things we can see when looking at recorded video. Now keep in mind it's not possible for me to recreate all of the errors that we could see so in some of these instances I'll just be given a description of what the operator might notice. So let's drag over a camera now and take a look at our timeline to go over some of the things that we can see and some of the challenges that we can see when working with playing back video on DS Control Point. So let's take a look at this image here and we're going to really break down the anatomy of what we're looking at and some of the common mistakes that can be made to cause us to miss video or indications that there is no video present. Let's take a look at our timeline. The timeline is in the middle of our screen and shows the date, the day, and our blue waveform indicating motion recording. The darker highlighted areas within the blue waveform shows our currently selected time period. So let's take a look at those peaks and valleys. The peaks are going to represent high movement times. The valleys are going to represent little to no movement. Now if we were to go here and search and not see any blue or very little blue for the time that we're looking at, that is an indication that the camera was not properly configured for motion recording. Now we want to make sure whenever using motion recording that each scene is calibrated for it as different scenes will have different settings. Also keep in mind the further away an object is from the camera the harder motion detection will be. Now let's take a look at the thumbnail preview images. We can see there are sections with no video. Because of motion recording, this is normal. However, with normal recording where your timeline is green, that should be fully populated. If we are doing normal recording and selecting a time period and see there are no video frames, this could be an indication that there is problems with either the camera dropping out of the network, the camera either dropping frames on the network due to high latency, or that there is a storage problem. In these cases, please contact us for further support. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna look at a different camera and we're gonna show you how this looks when we have this set up for both motion and normal recording. Now what you're gonna notice is now we have green and blue. What this is for is we're recording at a really low rate for the normal recording. This is to ensure that we don't miss anything. This is a lower resolution and a lower frame rate to conserve space. However, once motion kicks in, 
the motion is recorded at a higher frame rate and higher resolution so that way we can capture the detail we need if we have to identify objects within the scene. Now let's talk about why this is in troubleshooting as it appears to be a configuration video. Well, let's go back to what I was saying about motion recording and making sure cameras are configured properly for each scene. What happens is if we don't have it calibrated properly by setting the motion settings, when an action occurs, it's possible we could miss it. What we do to make sure that doesn't happen is we set normal recording all the time for a very low rate to reserve space. Then once motion occurs, we kick it up. This ensures that no matter what happens, we'll always be there to record it. And that is going to do it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please remember to like and subscribe. And remember, at Pelco, we've got it all covered.